Elie Middels, nummer 1432, met een uitzending van vandaag, 7 oktober 2018. Dit is het bulletin van zondag. Today's broadcast will be largely in English. Vandaag hebben we het RCB-nieuws en de propagatieverwachting. En inderdaad in de versie van TX Factor. Verder hebben we na Lodewijk op het laatste stukje Helschreiber. Om precies te zijn, Hel X9 bij 1500 Hz. Hel X9 bij 1500 Hz. Net als gisteren hebben we helemaal aan het einde, na de data, weer een interview over datacommunicatie. Het interview van vandaag is met Murray Greenman, Zulu Lima 1 Bravo Papa Uniform. Murray is een van de twee mensen die meerdere succesvolle nieuwe datamodus voor gebruik door centamateurs heeft bedacht. De andere is uiteraard Joe Taylor. Waar Taylor zich vooral op het werken van DX concentreert, specialiseert Greenman zich, net als David Fries van FL Digi, vooral op het terrein van noodverkeer bij calamiteiten. Hello, this is Bob McCready, G0FGX, with the TX Talk podcast of the GB2 RS News from the Radio Society of Great Britain for Sunday the 7th of October 2018. We start with the news headlines, RSGB Club of the Year winners announced, Jamboree on the Air looms large, and renew your 146 to 147 MHz NOV. At the National Hamfest on the 29th of September, the winners in the RSGB's National Club of the Year 2017 competition were presented with their prizes. Once again, we thank Waters and Stanton for sponsoring this year's event. There are two categories, large clubs with 25 members or over and small clubs with under 25 members. The third place large club was Stockport Radio Society in Region 3 and the small club was Greenisland Electronics and ARS in Region 8. Second place large club was Withal Radio Club in Region 5 and the small club was South Bristol ARC in Region 11 and the first place large club was Essex Ham in Region 12 and the small club was South Kesteven ARS in Region 13. Congratulations to all the winners for the excellent job they do at the grassroots of amateur radio and also to all the other clubs who took part in earlier stages of the competition. Two million young people from around the world are expected to take part in this year's Jamboree on the Air and Jamboree on the Internet. These take place from the 19th to the 21st of October and are the world's biggest scouting event. Some 20,000 licensed amateur radio operators put 12,000 radio stations on the air, offering an excellent opportunity for radio amateurs, both young and old, to inspire scouts with the charms of radio techniques. During JOTA, scouts and guides will encounter numerous different languages and cultures in a worldwide learning experience that lasts all day and well into the night. All current 146 to 147 MHz band notices of variation will expire on Tuesday the 31st of October. Ofcom has agreed that the band will be made available for another year, but to continue to use the frequencies you must obtain a new NOV via rsgb.org slash NOV. On Friday the 12th of October, the RSGB's National Radio Centre is inviting RSGB members to visit in the afternoon as part of the convention weekend. Entry will be via the main Bletchley Park site. RSGB members should download their free entry voucher from rsgb.org slash bpvoucher. At 3pm there will be a private Bletchley Park tour just for RSGB visitors and at 4pm there will be a practical introduction to making an FT8 QSO for anybody interested to learn about this new and very popular mode. Licensed amateurs are reminded to bring a copy of their license and if there is time they'll have the opportunity to operate the NRC station Golf Bravo 3 Romeo Sierra. IARU volunteers have been working for three years to progress World Radio Conference 2019 Agenda Item 1.1, which seeks a Region 1 allocation at around 50 MHz for the amateur service in the Radio Regulations Table of Frequency Allocations to align with the allocations in Regions 2 and 3. After many weeks of planning and meetings in both regional and global forums post the WRC in 2015, the next big step on the route to WRC 19 took place last week. The amateur service has met strong opposition from a few nation states who argue that the 50 MHz band is already allocated to other services in their countries. Following the closure of many broadcasting stations in recent years which operated in this band, and they believe that sharing the band presents problems. At this meeting, two options were prepared, and you can find out the full details of the meeting and the proposals at iaru-r1.org. iaru-r1.org, and that's all lowercase. 
The RSGB convention takes place from the 12th to the 14th of October at Kent's Hill Park Training and Conference Centre in Milton Keynes. Our thanks to the principal sponsor, Martin Lynch and Sons. This year there will be a partner's room, which also includes space for those who bring non-radio projects. And also the deadline has been extended until midnight on Sunday the 7th for those wishing to join others at the convention Build-A-Thon. You can see the whole convention lecture programme and apply for a Build-A-Thon place by going to rsgb.org slash convention. For the second time this year, during the weekend of the 13th and the 14th of October, the cadet forces will be operating on the UK 5 MHz band using the allocated frequencies for the purposes of Exercise Blue Ham 100. All their usual live logging and map plotting will be taking place. Upon conclusion of the exercise, amateurs who have met the requirements for the number of contacts can submit their log sheet to the Blue Ham X coordinator via blueham at alphacharlie.org.uk and have your certificate issued. And please note that once again, Again, the exercise has different QSL information. Also, PSK31 will be in use on 5.363 MHz. You can find all the details at alphacharlie.org.uk slash exercise hyphen blue hyphen ham. And that is Alpha Charlie spelled out, so it's A-L-P-H-A-C-H-A-R-L-I-E dot org dot uk slash exercise hyphen blue hyphen ham, all lowercase. Now we have the details of rallies and events for the coming week. And we start with Sunday the 7th of October when the 45th Welsh Radio Rally takes place at Rougemont School, Malpass Road, Newport, South Wales. The postcode is November Papa 206 Quebec Bravo. The doors open at 10 and admittance is £2.50. There'll be a bring and buy sale, catering, lectures and seminars, a talk-in, RSGB bookstall, trade stands, special interest groups and a prize draw and raffle. There'll be talks by Eric Edwards, Golf Whiskey 8, Lima Jr. Juliet, Juliet on free digital voice on HF and a talk by Andrew Rushton Golf Whiskey Zero Uniform Zulu Kilo on Aerial Basics Michael Rackham Golf Whiskey 4 Juliet Kilo Victor can tell you more on 01495 226 149 01495 226 149 Also on Sunday the Hack Green Bunker Rally will be held at Hack Green Secret Nuclear Bunker French Lane Hack Green Nantwich in Cheshire postcode Charlie Whiskey 5 8 Alpha Lima This will be a sale of electronic equipment, amateur gear, components, military radio items and vehicle spares. Doors open at 10 and there will be refreshments on site 01270 623 353 for more information. 01270 623 353. Next weekend in the USA from the 11th to the 14th of October, Microwave Update 2018 will be taking place. It's at the Holiday Inn in Dayton, Fairborn, Ohio. It's an international conference dedicated to microwave equipment design, construction and operation and is hosted by the Midwest VHF UHF Society. Microwaveupdate.org is the place to go for more info. Microwaveupdate.org. From the 12th to the 14th of October, as already mentioned, of course, the RSGB convention takes place, so we'll mention, mention it under rallies as well. And the address for that, remember, is Kent's Hill Park Training and Conference Centre, Swallow House, Timbold Drive, Kent's Hill Park, Milton Keynes in Buckinghamshire, Mike Kilo 7, 6 Bravo Zulu is the postcode. And for more information, go to rsgb.org slash convention. On the 14th of October, the Hornsey Amateur Radio Rally takes place in the Floral Hall, Hornsey. Hotel Uniform 18, 1 November, Quebec is the postcode. Doors open at 10, admission is £2 and under-14s are free. They promise trade stands, a bring and buy run by the Hornsey ARC and an RSGB bookstall, as well as hot and cold food in the cafe. Les, 2 Echo Zero, Lima, Bravo, Juliet can tell you more on 01377. 252393 01377252393 Finally the Holsworthy Radio Rally happens on the 14th of October this is at Holsworthy Community College which is in Victoria Hill Holsworthy in Devon postcode EX226JD there's going to be traders a bring and buy and catering doors open at 10 in the morning and Howard Mike Zero Mike Yankee Bravo can tell you more email holsworthyarc at gmail.com If you want to get your event into Radcom and GB2RS just send Send us the details as early as possible to radcom at rsgb.org.uk and remember we need to know at least three months in advance to get your information into Radcom.
Next, it's the DX News from 425 DX News and other sources. And John Whiskey 5, Juliet Oscar November, is going to be active as Victor 47, Juliet Alpha from St. Kitts. The IOTA reference is November Alpha 104. And he's there from the 10th of October to the 6th of November, operating SSB and FT8 on the 160 through 6 meter bands. QSL via Whiskey 5, Juliet Oscar November Direct only and Logbook of the World. Ken, Lima Alpha 7, Golf India Alpha, will be active as Tango Tango 8, Kilo Oscar from N'Djamena in Chad from the 9th to the 21st of October. He's going to operate CW and maybe some SSB on the 160 to 10 metre bands. Volca, Delta Lima 1, Whiskey Hotel, will be active as Delta Lima 1, Whiskey Hotel Portable from Rugen Island, Echo Uniform 057, from the 6th to the 20th of October. He's going to operate mainly CW and maybe some SSB on the HF bands and it's QSL via his home call direct or via the Bureau. Scout Station 3 Echo 1 Juliet Tango from Panama will be active throughout October and particularly during the Jamboree on the Air from the 19th to the 21st. And QSL for that one via Hotel Papa 1 Alpha Lima X Ray. Whiskey Alpha 7 Whiskey Juliet Romeo will be active as X Ray Victor 9 Whiskey Juliet Romeo from Vietnam until the 27th of October. He will operate CW, some PSK 31 and SSB on the 40, 20, and 15 metre bands from the city of Vung Tau with side trips to Konson Island, Alpha Sierra 130, and Pu Kwok Island, Alpha Sierra 128. QSL via Logbook of the World, EQSL, or via Whiskey Alpha 7, Whiskey Juliet Romeo. Special event news now, and we start with the RNIB, now known as the Royal National Institute of Blind People, was founded on the 16th of October 1868. As part of their 150th anniversary, Terry, Golf Mike 3, Whiskey Uniform X-Ray, is going to run Golf Romeo 150 NIB throughout October. Special QSLs will be available, and a log search is at g3swh.org.uk slash gr150nib.org. HTML. Bit of a mouthful. G3SWH.org.uk slash GR150NIB.html. Scarborough ARS will be operating Golf Bravo 2 Yankee Mike Romeo at Pickering War Weekend from the 12th to the 14th of October from the North York's Moors Railway Station, which is in Pickering. Operations will include some modern and military radios and a warm welcome is extended to all visitors and those they contact on the air. The Wireless in Wales Amateur Radio Club will be operating Golf Bravo Zero Whiskey India Whiskey on the 8th of October to celebrate the museum's 10th anniversary. Museum tours, talks and refreshments will be available from 10am to 3pm and visitors are most welcome. Remember, we're very happy to publicise your events on GB2RS in Radcom and on the RSGB website. Just send the details to radcom at rsgb.org.uk as early as possible. And as we always mention, one condition for getting a special event call sign is the station must be open to the public so our free publicity can make your efforts more widely known and ensure plenty of people come to see you. Now let's have a look at the contest news, starting with the CQ Worldwide DXRTTY contest, which ends its 48-hour run at 23.59 on Sunday the 7th. Using the 3.5 to 28 megahertz contest bands, the exchange is RST and Zone, which for the UK is 14. The Oceania DXSSB contest ends its 24-hour run at 0800 UTC on Sunday the 7th. Using SSB only on the 1.8 to 28 megahertz contest bands, the exchange is signal report and serial number. The IARU 432 megs to 245 gigahertz contest ends its 24-hour run at 1400 UTC Sunday the 7th. Using all modes on 70 centimetres and above, the exchange is signal report, serial number and locator. Also on Sunday, the DX contest test takes place from 0500 to 2300 UTC using CW and SSB on the 3.5 to 28 megahertz contest bands the exchange is signal report and serial number the Worked All Britain DX contest takes place on Sunday the 7th as well from 0500 to 2300 UTC. The exchange is RS plus serial number plus WAB square and they'll be using the 80, 50, 20, 15 and 10 metre bands SSB only. Now this is a new contest. It replaces their HF contest that was discontinued. Entries need to be with the contest manager by the 28th of October and you go to worked-all-britain.org.uk as your source for details of the rules and log sheets. That's worked-all-britain.org.uk. On Tuesday, the 432 MHz FM activity contest runs from 1800 to 1900 UTC 
using FM only, and then it's immediately followed by the All Mode 432 MHz UK Activity Contest from 1900 to 2130 UTC. In both contests, the exchange is signal report, serial number and locator. On Thursday, the 50 MHz FM Activity Contest runs from 1800 to 1900 UTC using FM only, and as you might have guessed, it's immediately followed by the All Mode 50 MHz UK Activity Contest from 1900 to 2130 UTC. The exchange for both contests is signal report, serial number and locator. Next weekend, the Oceania DXCW contest will be running from 0800 UTC on the 13th to 0800 UTC on the 14th. That uses the 1.8 to 28 megahertz contest bands, and of course it's CW only, the exchange signal report and serial number. And on the 14th, the IRTS 40 meter counties contest runs from 1200 to 1400 UTC. This one uses CW and SSB on the 7 megahertz band, and the exchange is signal report and serial number with EI and GI stations also sending their county. Now let's have a look at radio propagation. Our report is compiled by Golf 0 Kilo Yankee Alpha, Golf 3 Yankee Lima Alpha and Golf 4 Bravo Alpha Oscar and was compiled on Friday the 5th of October. There are signs that ionospheric conditions are improving as we head into autumn. This isn't unexpected. As the ionosphere cools, there is a chemical shift towards more monatomic species that are easier to ionise. The four, Uniform 1, Uniform November, New York, and Victor Echo 8 Alpha Tango Nunavut and Zulu Sierra 6 Delta November Pretoria beacons on 14.100 MHz were all audible at the same time on Wednesday in the UK, so we can expect transatlantic conditions to get better as the month progresses. Robert Golf 4 Tango Uniform Kilo even reported working Mayotte in the Indian Ocean on 10 metres, so do make sure you make the most of the Autumn DX openings if and when they occur. Next week, the Solar Flux Index is predicted to remain around 68 to 70, so 14 and 18 MHz are likely to be the main daylight DX bands, with the possibility of the occasional opening on the higher bands. However, the effects of a solar coronal hole may once again disrupt the ionosphere, with Sunday the 7th and Monday the 8th predicted to see a raised KP index of up to 6. Look for pre-auroral enhancements before or just after the solar matter hits the Earth. One way to do this is to monitor the real-time solar wind at solarham.com. An increasing wind speed, increasing particle density and a south-facing interplanetary magnetic field, or BZ, are all indicators of an impending geomagnetic disturbance. Wednesday the 10th and Thursday the 11th may also be disturbed before we see a little respite later in the week. For VHF and up, it's looking a bit mixed for the next week, with high pressure nearby over southern areas, while we have occasional periods of low pressure to the north and west of Scotland. The high pressure in the south will mean that Tropo will be a feature again this week. This is typical autumn fair, and there should be some good paths into the continent and across the southern North Sea to the Baltic. It will also be worthwhile checking paths to the south across Biscay to Spain and the Canaries. The northwest of the British Isles will probably miss out on these Tropo conditions, since it will also be rather breezy with occasional rain or showers. A few options may present themselves for some rain scatter on the microwave bands. Moon declination is positive until Monday night, so EME windows will shorten and losses will climb as the week progresses. October's a busy month for meteor showers. Next Tuesday sees the peak of the Draconids, which favours temperate and far northern latitudes, and look for increased activity from Sunday night. And that's it for the propagation team for this week and for this broadcast of the RSG News. Just a reminder, if you want to see a full transcript of this broadcast, you'll find it at the RSGB website under News. To hear the local news, tune in to the amateur radio station that provides that service for your area, and you can also find the local news bulletins on the RSGB website. I'm Bob McCready, G0 FGX, and this has been the TX Talk podcast of the GB2 RS News from the Radio Society of Great Britain. Deelingmiddels zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x xdvme Dat is ook te vinden rechts bovenaan de webpagina van de uitzending in www.pa0ete.nl. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen. Ik ben na de uitzending van 7 uur s'avonds weer QFV op Echolink via PI3XTV. 
P3XTV min R en staat op Egolink, nodenummer 979350. En daarnaast op de beide chats. De internetfaciliteiten en studio hardware voor Daily Minutes worden gesponsord door 70 megahertzshop.nl. 70 mhzshop.nl. En microfoon naar het toer. We'll go digital in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. From the analog studios of the Radio Amateur Information Network, I'm Will Rogers, K5WLR, with this RAIN report. That's the sound of FSQ, Fast Simple QSO. One of the New Zealand hams behind it is retired electronics engineer Murray Greenman, ZL1BPU. When Murray isn't driving a school bus in his retirement, he's dabbling in the digital realm of amateur radio. I've been interested in finding a way of providing good comms for emergency operation for some time. But my friend con ZL2AFP and I have been chatting about that and exploring other modes. As you probably know, I specified MFSK-16 back in 1999 and it's sort of developed from there. The most recent couple of developments that Con and I have done have been Domino EX back about 96 or thereabouts and then WSQ, Weak Signal QSO, which was developed for the really long wave bands. It's extremely sensitive, but the, what we developed for that was several of the things that are now in FSQ. First of all, the alphabet and the use of 33 tones and the business of not having any sync. That all came in WSQ, and, and we got to thinking, this is sort of the middle of last year, how it might be possible to speed the whole thing up and make something useful for a chat mode that we might be able to add things to to make it useful for emergency comms. And by chat mode, I mean a way that you can have a conversation with somebody that's unlike a rag chew. Conventional rag chew QSOs, somebody wibbles on for five minutes and then they put it over to somebody else and they wibble on for five minutes. Whereas a chat is like a face-to-face conversation. You have a, you say a sentence and while you take a breath, someone else says a sentence. Well, that's what we had in mind. WSQ worked by typing a sentence and pressing enter. But of course it was very slow, it only worked at about three words a minute. So we thought, see if we can speed this up. That's what got us started. That was about July, August last year. FSQ means, or stands for, Fast Simple QSO. And that's relatively self-explanatory, and I think it explains exactly what it does. It's a chat mode that uses 33 tones, and because it uses so many tones, it's able to send a letter of the alphabet on one tone. So despite the fact that the, the tone rate is quite slow, sort of thing, it's able to send a whole letter on each tone. So the typing speed is quite fast. It's a frequency shift key mode with 33 tones, giving 32 tone differences. It uses incremental keying, which means that the information is sent not in the value of the tone, the audio frequency tone, but in the difference between that tone and the previous one. That's what incremental frequency keying means. That has several advantages. One of them is that it makes it drift proof. Another one is that it makes it much less affected by Doppler shift, which is a common problem on signals on these frequencies. And the third thing is it has to do with the way the synchronism or lack of synchronism works. You don't ever get two tones one after the other that are the same, so it can work out where each tone finishes and the next one starts easily. And the final thing about that is that because you never get two tones the same or even adjacent, the tones don't interfere with each other. And while you say, well, hang on, send one tone after the other, how can they interfere with each other? The answer is they often arrive from different ionospheric paths and therefore overlap. So we need to make sure that the signal doesn't interfere with itself when it's coming by different paths. This is MVIS, after all. What if you're using two letters that are identical in a row? 
Ah, remember it's incremental. The value of the letter is sent not in the value of the frequency of the tone, but in the difference between one tone and the next. So, for example, if you hit the space bar several times, you get da 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 not the same tone all the time. Because there's a difference, there's also an extra one added. It's, it's a bit complicated, but it's an offset incremental frequency keying system. Domino EX used the same thing. Once we proved that it did work sped up, we also discovered that it was also quite robust. We spent quite a lot of time adjusting the parameters, the board rates and the spacings and all that sort of thing, to suit the sort of propagation you get on 80, 40 and 30 metres, especially 80 and 40, which is near vertical incident signals, NVIS stuff. And once we'd got that worked out, we realised that it was extremely robust and didn't require any error correction. The whole business of adding the commands and so on for emergency comms and the general fun of it came along from that. I specified the command structure. It's sort of quite new. Nothing's ever been done quite like that before. That's how it sort of grew. What kind of issues are your new FSQ users encountering or reporting to you? The first one is how little they read the documentation. Most of the questions that are asked can be answered by reading the documentation. Others are difficult to answer at all because they have unreasonable expectations. But there are some really interesting ones. I, I met one yesterday. A guy was asking, why do when we've got perfectly good text communication using FSQ, why do the images that we receive, because this is, it's able to see in pictures as well, why are the pictures noisy? And the answer to that is not as simple as you might think. It's to do with the fact that when you're receiving tones, individual tones which are used for text, you're receiving them in individual filters that are three hertz wide. Whereas when you're receiving the images, you're receiving them in a single demodulator process which is 400 hertz wide and so the signal to noise ratio is correspondingly worse. There will be lots of questions about the syntax of the commands and why they work like they do and why can't you do this and why can't you do that. To some extent it's unreasonable expectations but most of the time it's operational problems. People not setting the software up correctly, problems with sound cards, particularly have problems with computer operated transmitters cat control you're listening to a conversation between rains hap holly kc9rp and mary greenman zl1bpu a driving force behind the digital mode known as fsq fast simple qso murray also developed a high stability reference which he adapted for ham use as a gps disciplined reference We'll conclude our conversation with Murray after I remind you that The Rain Report is available anytime on therainreport.com, on Twitter at hashtag therainreport, and via iTunes. You are listening to The Rain Report from www.therainreport.com. Let's talk about the emergency communications application of FSQ. As you probably realize, a lot of emergency communications these days is done on VHF and UHF, but it relies on what I call infrastructure. You need to have repeaters. You can't get very far unless you do. The whole aim of FSQ is that it provides digital capability without requiring infrastructure. In other words, you can be 100 kilometers away from your nearest contact station and you may have had some sort of civil emergency, but you're able to contact someone out of the area easily. If the emergency is quite widespread, then you can contact people in other parts of the area. And it's especially important in our country because it's not only sparsely populated, but it's quite hilly and with a lot of forest, so VHF comms is really not practical. While we do have some repeaters, you can guarantee that in time of civil emergency, an earthquake or a tornado or a tsunami, that those things won't be available. That's why uh, the use of NVIS. There's no other means of getting propagation from one point to another with relatively simple equipment when you've got hills and forests in the way. You need to use the ionosphere. We really need to take a minute to define... NVIS. Near vertical incidence signals. In other words, signals that go up, not necessarily vertically, but not out horizontally, that go up into the ionosphere and hit the E layer, which is about 30 to 50 kilometers up, or the F layer, which might be 300 kilometers up, and then turn around and come back down again. 
if you're far enough away, there won't be any ground wave signal. You'll just get signals that have come back from the ionosphere to your station. Unfortunately, there are several paths. As I said, E layer and F1 and F2, because there are two F layers often. Uh, during the day, there are certainly two F layers. Consequently, you get signals from these three different sources, which have different timing and also have different frequencies because the layers are moving, so you get Doppler shift. That's the nature of NVIS. You get multiple signals arriving, because if you're close enough, you can get ground wave as well. And they all have different timing. They can have different frequencies, and their signal strengths vary up and down. So when they interfere with each other, you get considerable fading and so on. So you need a huge fade margin to be able to handle signals like that, and you have to have a mode that will handle large changes in timing and large changes in frequency. By large, I mean it's about one ppm, one hertz per megahertz of frequency shift. The frequencies we're talking about where NVIS operation works between, say, two megahertz and 10 megahertz, and during the day, the higher frequencies work, and during the end at night, the lower frequencies work. So the advantage of NVIS is that you can be on one side of a mountain and you need to get a signal to the other side, FSQ would work for that. My friend Con, who's the guy that has written the software, lives in Gisborne, which is 300 kilometers from here. We have no trouble at all talking to each other most of the day on 40 meters and most of the night on 80 meters. In winter, the crossover point is a bit touchy around about 5 p.m. where 40 metres can die out before 80 metres is picked up. But late at night on 80 metres, we hear VK6s running FSQ. That's the western side of Australia, 3,000 kilometres away. Tell me about the software. The original software, written by Con ZL2AFP, was written in standard NCC, and it's a simple standalone program. It's been copied and adapted slightly by a couple of Americans and added a couple of Americanized features, especially for relaying. That's something that Americans are really keen on, relaying messages. NW8L and KA4CDN are the two guys. The original ZL2AFP code is public domain. He's released the source code for it. These two guys took the source code and tweaked it a bit, but their program has a few other features, but it essentially looks exactly the same and works the same. There's a third program currently available and that's been done quite differently done by dave w1hkj who is the fl digi man he has adapted the code to fit into fl digi it functions a bit differently and it's quite a bit more difficult to use but it has several major advantages first of all it's in a suite of programs that runs all the other modes it runs rgty and psk31 and so on and that's been quite a challenge for him because it's the first mode that he's got in his suite that works as a chat mode uh, you press enter and it sends. That's different. It's not a uh, rag chew mode. Big, big advantage is the FL Digi version runs on Apple and Linux platforms, whereas the original and the and the first American copy of it purely Windows programs. Although they will work, work on Linux if you use Wine. The point is that with a, an NVIS setup, you can put up an antenna for 80 metres that's quite low to the ground. In fact, on 40 metres, I frequently just dangle it on a fence or a hedge. It doesn't need to be up very high because you're wanting the signals to go up anyway. For an emergency station, you can get out there with your car and your your gear and and connect up very easily. And then you've got comms for 50 to 200 or 300 kilometers. And you can send formal messages as well as just conversations and and orders and, and things like that. Much simpler and cheaper than any of the more formal selective calling systems. More importantly, it's ad hoc meaning anybody can be involved. It all works by call sign. You don't have to have pre-registered station IDs. You don't have to have your gear pre-programmed. There are no pre-programmed frequencies and all that sort of thing, which is what happens with other selective calling systems. And, of course, the ad hoc thing is very, very important in an emergency situation because you have to work with what you've got. That's that aspect of it. So you can use it for order wire, in other words, telling a station what to do and where to go, You can use it for sending messages to stations, which they can record. You can send formal radiograms, pictures back and forth. You can use your webcam to send a picture. I would imagine in a real live emergency, your base station would need to be set up for at least two bands because comms for some stations would drop out on one band before they went did it where it did on others, depending on the distance. But the whole thing has been thought about to be an infrastructure-free ad hoc system. That's essentially it. 
Where would I find FSQ, typically? The program itself lists the operating frequencies. There's a tab in the program called the Rules tab, which gives you instructions on how to basically operate the system, what you can and can't do and how it works. It gives you a list of the calling frequencies. For Region 2, 80 metres is 3594, 40 metres is 7104, 30 metres is 10144. They are upper sideband dial frequencies. Give those frequencies once more, please. 3594, 7104, 10144. And that concludes our foray into FSQ, Fast Simple QSO, with its driving force, Murray Greenman, ZL1 BPU, of Waiuku, New Zealand. You can read Murray's article about FSQ in the September 2015 QST, and you'll find the URL for his website on the Rain Sites mentioned page on therainreport.com. The Rain Report is copyright 1990-2015 Rain. All rights are reserved. Now for everyone connected with the Radio Amateur Information Network, I'm Will Rogers, K5WLR, bidding you very 73 from the Rain Report. Accessible on therainreport.com, via Twitter at hashtag therainreport, and on iTunes.